fans, welcome back to Room 237 as I continue my marathon of Italian horror films and giallo films. And uh, for this, we're going back to one that I recently picked up and have not seen before. But it is another Lucio Fulci film, one I've known about for a long time, but have been unable to find until recently, and this is the Scorpion releasing. And I have to say, this one is as surprising as it is overlooked and underrated and underappreciated. And that is his 1984 Giallo Murder Rock. Or uh, Dance of Death or Murder Rock Dance of Death. <clears throat> and yeah, it came out in 1984 and... I could tell from I didn't really know much about the plot at all going into this. Actually, I didn't even know it was really about uh, dance students and dancing up until I saw this still on the back, and I thought, okay, it's like Suspiria meets Jallo, but it's actually more like Flash Dance meets Jallo. Um, I will have to say this is very very different for a Fulci film. Um, I've heard people call this sleazy, but I didn't really get any sleaze out of this at all. In fact, this feels the closest, and I don't know if this was intentional or not, but the closest Fulci has ever got to an Argento Giallo, because this one is definitely more built on atmosphere, shots, tone, uh, paranoia, just the overall look of the film rather than the bloodshed, which there's very little. In fact, even some of the deaths are rather merciful in this, especially considering since, uh, was it two years prior, 1982, when uh, New York Ripper came out? which has got to be Fulci's sleaziest, most brutal, mean-spirited giallo. And one of the biggest giallos of that kind in general. Mean-spirited, sleazy, bloody, brutal. So this one's like the total opposite. Um, but I have to say, I really did enjoy it. And there's a lot of uh, familiar faces in it, too. The star of the film is Olga Karlatos, probably mispronounced that as Candace. And of course, she was the uh, woman from Fulci Zombie from the infamous Splinter in the Eye scene. We have Claudio Casanelli, who's been in several gi giallos. Uh, Cosimo Sidieri, who was also a uh, New York Ripper. Greta Marie Fields, who I know were from Demons. She was the first person to get possessed in Demons, but I know she's been in a lot of other Italian films, and she's actually a very big uh, voice dubbing actress as well. Uh, Christian uh, Borromeo. He was the blonde lead teen in House on the Edge of the Park. He was in uh, Tenebrae. It, he's also in this. Also, the young uh, redheaded girl from House by the Cemetery. She's in this. Thank God it's that kid and not fucking Bob. Like, Bob's in enough movies. <laughs> He was at the end of Demons. He's in A Blade in the Dark. I know he's in Manhattan Baby, but I don't have that one yet. Bob's in enough movies. But that young girl, she's also in this. Lucio Fulci himself has an appearance, as always. He's like the Italian Hitchcock. Al Cliver also makes an appearance as a forensic analyst. So, ton of uh, familiar faces. And then, of course, you add the dance studio, sort of dance academy uh, setting, kind of like Suspiria, but that that's ballet. This is definitely more flash dance, like the spandex, the upbeat pop music. 
which the score, which was done by Keith Emerson, uh, I, I will say, even though the main song, the Paranoia song, does fit, I wasn't the biggest fan of that song, except for the very beginning, the opening notes of that song, and some of the score really helps the atmosphere. Uh, the story, uh, one tiny aspect is similar to Lizard and a Woman's Skin, but overall, I thought the story and the reveal of the killer was fairly original and well done. Uh, and the way it was, you know, not just the motive, but also how the characters found out, how they told us, I thought that worked well. Uh, but basically, the overall story is there is this dance studio that is led by a <clears throat> sort of disillusioned instructor named Candace, played by Olga Kalatos, who some years ago was in an accident. She was hit by a motorcyclist, gave her an injury that killed her dancing career. And she never recovered from it mentally and emotionally. So now she's an instructor. And uh, Goretta Marie Fields does a lot of the, um, I think she's like co-instructor. But, <clears throat> so they're doing this class and then behind the scenes we find out that three dancers are going to be picked to be have some sort of appearance on television like the three best dancers and once that knowledge gets out all the killer uh all the killers all you know the girls are picked off one by one eliminating the competition and all the while candace is having dreams of this mysterious man who's trying to kill her with the same weapon that's being used on these girls which is a silver pin, like a long pin. I think they call it a head pin with a gold lion's head piece on the handle, which the dream sequence I thought was very well shot. Uh, when he's coming after her with the needle, like the way it's shot, it's like has this really long, like it looks extra long. It's like these very wide set pieces. You know, he, he really, Fulci really brings the Argento to this one. Uh, maybe not color-wise, like the color palette, but the way things are shot. And the way the killer is dispatching these girls is, it's not very sleazy. The only nudity we get is when these girls are killed. And that is the killer chloroforms them. And then when they're knocked out, rips their shirt open so a breast is exposed and we hear the heartbeat the pin goes in right under the breast in, in between the ribs and we kind of hear some set so <laughs> sound effects and eventually we hear the heartbeat stop so the pin is puncturing the heart and they say the chloroform is to get them to not not only not resist but also so they don't feel any pain so it's like they're dying in their sleep so it's actually <laughs> Compared to New York Ripper, this is probably the most merciful Jallo I, th I think I've ever seen. Still dog sitting, still being a pain in the ass. Um, oh, uh, and I just noticed this on the back. Also known as the Demon is, Demon is Loose and Slash Dance. I was actually being kind of facetious when I said Flash Dance means Jallo. But, uh, oh, and I guess Keith Emerson also did the music for The Church and Inferno. I thought Goblin did Inferno, unless Keith Emerson is part of Goblin, which I wasn't really sure. So with that, I'm, I'm going to get into spoilers. But uh, I just want to see, is he part of Goblin? No, we, no. The founding member, 
founding member of, of Emerson Lake and Palmer. He's the Emerson in of Emerson Lake. I did not know that, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, so I'm gonna get in uh, spoilers, but before I do, <coughs> um, oh yeah, so the blonde kid from House on the Edge Park in Tenebrae, he's one of the dancers. Um, I know a lot of the uh, some of the other girls look familiar as well it's definitely you know i'll even say don't torture a duckling and lizard woman skin is more of a bloody effects film than this so if that's what you're looking for for Fulci, you're going to be disappointed but if you want a really good solid jello that really does feel more argento inspired this is definitely worth a look and I'm not sure why and maybe that's why it's so overlooked and you hardly ever hear anyone talk about this uh, I only have one more Fulci Jallo to discuss and that's uh, the psychic he did five Jallos people think he did more but really only did five Jallos this is the fourth one I'm talking about uh, which is kind of funny because uh, Argento did his supernatural films, Suspiria and Inferno, people wanted him to do Jallo, and then he did uh, uh, Tenebrae, which is very mean-spirited and in-your-face and brutal, and then he did Phenomena, which is a blend of the two and not quite as brutal and sleazy. Fulci does New York Ripper, which is, I mean, you kind of feel like you need to shower after watching it, it's a lot of the deaths in that are just really horrific. And then he did this, and it's quite merciful. I, I keep using that word, but that's really what it is. I mean, very l little nudity, which I'm totally fine with. The nudity is really only there to help with the kill, essentially, to get to the heart. And the kills are done in such a way that the victims don't feel any pain. And so, yeah, it's basically just knocking out the uh, uh, dance competition to be who's going to be on television. And we also follow a, a police lieutenant, Borgs, played by, what was it, uh, Cinerini? Yeah. and this uh, professor that he's with they're trying to solve it but also uh, the girl Candace is trying to piece these things together like who is this guy that she's dreaming about that's coming after her trying to kill her which is this guy named George Webb who's a washed up actor and she starts to be paranoid as it like is he part like is he the killer and she kind of can't really discern who she can trust and really what's going on so she descends into madness and it's will she find the killer on her own or will the killer find her or will the lieutenant solve it before that happens that's really the gist of the story so with that, I'm going to get into spoilers, but for Jallo fans, definitely recommended. I don't think enough people talk about this. And for Fulci fans, as long as you keep an open mind that you're not going to get New York Ripper, and it's not sleazy or gory or anything, and it definitely is more about atmosphere and shots and just really making a good-looking movie then I think you'll enjoy it. So, spoilers, killer reveal, coming up. So, this movie does make it seem like several different people are the killer. Like, at one point, we think it's the blonde kid, House on the End of the Park, because he was dating the first victim. At another point, it seems like, I, I think this one kid is like the brother of another girl who's like the sound guy he walks with the limp because they leave every time just as they leave the one of these girls gets killed so it's like they 
the movie wants you to think they leave and then come back. At another point, the girl from House by the Cemetery is being babysat by another one of the dancing girls. She gets killed. And she actually have the little girl happens to take a picture of the killer. And uh, who was that one guy played by uh, Dick something? Dick Gibson. Oh. What the hell is his name? Oh. Oh, he's the director of the Academy. Uh, play, played by... I just looked for his name, then I lost it. Claudio Casanelli. He goes to that young girl, that little girl's apartment while she's being babysat. He leaves right after the murder, so it looks like he's the killer, but it turns out he went there just as the killer left and saw the body. So it sets up a lot of red herrings via that way. And then it did something that was very interesting, which um, Carlitos gets chloroformed, and the pin is just about to go in, and then someone walks in on the killer, and it's Greta Marie Fields, like the sort of co-instructor, who is kind of doing a copycat killing because she hates her. Because, which, I, that's what I got out of it. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just kind of looking over the summary again to see if there was any small facts that I missed, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's because... When Fields is found out, she keeps saying, she's crying, saying, I hate her, I hate her. But she can't bring herself to do it. So, the way it revealed her, Fields, I was like, no way, she's the killer. But come to find, it's just someone trying to do a copycat killing. You know, to sort of cover it up, make it look like the actual killer did it. I was like, oh, there's a way to do a red herring that I haven't quite seen before. I thought that worked. And then the movie really wants you to think that this uh, uh, Weber guy, because Candace is at his apartment, finds the chloroform and pin in his drawer, and then leaves in a panic, and then he looks in his drawer, and he's like, ah, shit. And ch he chases after her. And eventually he does meet up with Candace and, you know, he has like this evil look on his face. Come to find out. Oh, and of course, the lieutenant keeps hitting a dead end. But when they say that the wheelchair girl who was being babysat took a picture, it's just from here down. So they put it in the projector. And it's what we've already seen, just a black leather jacket. But he realized that the picture is backwards. So when he flips the slide over, he sees that the buttons are on the left side. So it's a woman's jacket. And that's before we see the last kill. Because it kind of makes us want to think that that girl that has the brother is the killer. But then she gets killed. So during the final meeting between Weber and Candace... And we're supposed to think it's him, even though it showed us that the killer wears a woman's jacket. She reveals that she knew it was him the whole time. It wasn't this mysterious man in a dream that she dreamt about. Because they even have a conversation about how the mind cannot uh, create faces that it hasn't seen in dreams. And that was the thing that kind of made me think of Lizard and Woman's Skin, the fabrication of these dreams sort of like as an alibi almost so yeah he wasn't a mysterious man in her dreams he was the man from the hit and run on the motorcycle that injured her and killed her dancing career and she killed these girls out of 
jealousy of their beauty, fame, talent, or their soon to come fame, their talent and uh, rising fame. She killed them out of jealousy. And it's something she will never have. And she planted the evidence to pin it all on him as an act of, reve of uh, revenge. Frame him and then ruin his life. He has the pin. And she kind of walks towards him and pulls herself into it and she dies. And then that's when the lieutenant comes in. And I thought it was going to be a... Uh, happy birthday to me type ending where they just walk in and it's over because Italian films do like to just end but no they do say we know it's not you even though it does look like he did it and they said when she came to us to say she found the evidence at your place she described the head pin perfectly like when she described her dream of you killing her with the pin. She described the pin so perfectly. And it, it's never gone public. And the pin. Uh, I think the pin was left. Because one of the girls. Had a, uh, a parakeet. And the pin was left in the parakeet. And she described it so perfectly. That only the killer could know what it looked like. And that's how they knew. And also the picture that showed. Uh, the jacket being a woman's jacket. So they knew it was her. And he he does kind of confess that, you know, he, he did take, kill her hopes and dreams from the accident. And they just kind of lead him out of the building. And that's the end of the movie. So yeah, I thought it was fair... Fairly original. Uh, have this dance academy and have this competition. The competition being wiped out. And I'm sure there's other giallos that are kind of similar. I mean, this came out well after the genre had already go really gone downhill. <clears throat> I mean, there were some that came out after this, like Lamberto Bava's uh, uh, Delirium. Even Argento's Opera, which is awesome. But, you know, I, I did like the story. I did like a lot of the red herring fake outs. But, like with the Greta Marie Fields, like when it shows her, but shows it's just going to be a copycat killing. I did think that the 80s synth pop uh, um, music did help. Even though I wasn't the biggest fan of the main song, except for the very beginning, a lot of the pieces did help with the atmosphere and tone. I think this was a very well shot film. <clears throat> I think it was, you know, it is like Fault She Gone Argento, especially the dream sequence. Just the way a lot of the why the. It's very big open set pieces, very brightly lit, and I think Fault She did a great job at shooting that then having the needle look very warped and long and of course you had a lot of the fault sheet tropes like someone being surprised and scared you get the close-ups of the eyes but it it was kind of a, a refreshing to see fault sheet do a jello that was so not sleazy and so not gory and that was so heavily reliant on story and characters and just the look and quality of the film itself and I think that made it totally effective and I actually really enjoyed it and I think it's if that is the reason why it's so overlooked and underrated and underappreciated then I think that's really sad because I think this is definitely worth the watch. And I think as a film, I think it's uh, better than New York Ripper. Sure, that's more fun if you're in for like a really bloody, sleazy, nasty film. But I think as far as how it's shot and how well it's made, I think this is the superior film. So yeah, that is Lucio Fulci's 1984 Giallo uh, A Murder Rock.
like I said before, as surprising and good as it is overlooked, underrated, underappreciated. And if you stuck through the spoilers and now know who the killer is, I still highly recommend it because it it is great to see one great director that's known for a certain style really feel like he's embodying another great director. Just see what that would look like. Fulci gone Argento. A little bit of flash dance. Where could you go wrong? But anyway, stay tuned for more Italian horror films and giallos. Uh, thank you for watching. Oh, oh.